Hello, my name is Benny, and I was a quartermaster on this ship here, USS Rodney Maxwell Davis. It was a great ship with a great crew. I just really want to warn you, you're not going to learn anything about this event with me. I'm just going to talk as is, and um, maybe I get it right, maybe I don't. I was expelled from the chart table during these exercises because I'm not the greatest quartermaster, especially when it comes to math. However, I was a good photographer, I'd say, and I think I captured this as it is. Pretty cool, pretty dangerous, a lot of work, and uh, here it is. We're just trying to get to a safe, calm, easy spot to where we can you know, start sharing our lines and then transferring cargo. Your captain's rendezvoused with the USNS ship and they've found a place in the ocean where you can go for miles and miles and miles and one straight line you can go for hours in one straight line and not worry about hitting anything. So that's the course that we have. All right, so we're going to make an approach from the stern. And as a quartermaster, we're looking at their flags. I didn't remember any of this. I don't. This isn't coming out off the top of my head. I'm using a chart here. But I'm just going to tell you this is how we make our approach. And there's my chief right there on the telescopic alidade, which has some purpose, which I forget. Um, you have the control ship or guide ship. They're on a steady course, so they have a flag called Romeo, Romeo, and they have it at the dip, and we also have Romeo at the dip. They're making preparations for us to come alongside, and we're telling them we're making the same preparations to come alongside. Okay, cool. Now the guide ship hauls up Romeo. Say, okay, let's do it. So we do too, and now it's time to hit it. Now there's a vortex in this. It's called the Venturi effect. You see the water in between these two ships is like a, it's like a river. If you get too far into this speeding water, it will suck you down. Meaning, if we got too close to that other ship, we could capsize. It would just it would rip us right on our side. When you get sucked underneath the ship, you're going to meet the rotor. It's going to chop you up. There's also intakes on the bottom of the ship. You can fall into the drink. It'll get sucked under the water, under the ship. A ship sucks in seawater to run many of the machines. This is one of the dangers when you're doing um, ship maintenance. You know, you get Navy divers that do welding and stuff underneath the ships and you gotta make sure those intakes are off because there are many stories of sailors underneath the ship getting sucked into that intake not fun so needless to say this is a very dangerous event for these sailors the bridge is tight man they they want this to be perfect you know, we also want it to be good for the USNS ship here, which is a ship with civilians and sailors. You can see the blue in the yellow stripe that indicates a USNS ship. USNS ships are like the worker bees of the ocean. You know, they go ship to ship and offer assistance in any way they can. You know, a day like this, the USNS ship might have four or five replenishments at sea. Oh, there he is. It's called a bolo, I think. Just a little brick of twine. Shoots it over. It's kind of dangerous, but it wouldn't hurt you if it hit you.
It's a fun shot, but it's a little bit of pressure on you as a gunner's mate to make that shot. You know, you gotta, you gotta pretty much thread the needle. You gotta shoot it like ahead of the wind. You gotta match kind of the speed of where you, where you think they're gonna be. It's a tough shot. Not all gunner's mates can get it the first time. You know, I shoot it over there. It falls in the drink. I shoot it over there. It's like way over. You know. <laughs> over the ship. This right here is the Texas Rattlesnake. His name is Cody. Some say he's the best wrestler out of the Bosa mates. Others disagree. I was invited to one of their wrestling matches in the birthing. And if you've ever been in a or birthing with a bunch of bosa mates, you know how crazy they are. Pass a bosa mate in the ship. Where'd you get that black eye, bosa mate? They're like, what black eye? Roger that. Those bench seats were pushed to the walls. And those boys put a mat down and they'd go at it. I was not impressed by the wrestling. We sent our third best fighter down there. He got tied up. They beat him pretty good. And I was pissed. So we sent down another guy, our number one. Cool Breeze. Where'd you get that black guy, quartermaster? <laughs> A real dangerous part is if one of these lines snaps, you know, we're all so close to it that one of us is probably going to get hit somehow, but that's how it is. You get hit, off, knocked off the ship, and then you're just getting sucked under the, under the ship. If you get past the intake, then you're going to hit the rotor. A gentleman right there has the words hold and fast on his knuckles. He's a true frigate sailor. You know, the truest of true sailors gets their ship tattooed in the middle of their chest. I mean, th that's, that's when you've gone overboard. You're all in. We tried to convince a few of our folks to get that tattoo, but man, that's a lot of commitment. Now we finally have a wire that's big enough and robust enough to start carrying a load. And if a captain and, and his or her crew can nail this event over and over and over, no mishaps, everybody's good, quick, it, it lessens the stress, of course, on the USNS ship, but it also sends a message, you know. We like, we like to be alongside the USS Rodney M. Davis, this frigate. The line's loose and it's easy. And you're like, man, this is going to be an easy one. Oh, man. And then it starts to get, you start feeling like a tar on your hand. You're like, oh, no, here it is. As soon as the hose is over and clicked in, they get to rest. So... They don't really dog it. There's no point in dogging it. If everybody gets rolling like really hard, um, you get the you get the job done quicker. Here and then the probe starts coming over, man. You gotta pull. You gotta pull that line. You gotta have motivated bosom mates. That right there is called a sailor's nest. You get a good... It's basically like a bean bag. You put it in a shape like that, and then you can lay right into it. That's a good way to sleep. And then it gets to the end, man. You're just humping this line, and you're like, let's go, everybody. I, we see it. We see it out of the corner of your eye. Your forearms are burning. Your hands are hosed, man. And they're like, it's almost here. Stop being a...
The probe meets the receiver. And now the sailors can start pumping gas. You know, we transfer missiles back and forth, ammunition, fuel, diesel oil, you know, jet oil, lube oil, feed water, potable water stores, food, all that. And then there, there's personnel or light freight. The personnel and light freight one is pretty cool. Maybe they need to bring over like a captain or somebody, some secret squirrel needs to go somewhere. Maybe you have somebody who's injured. We have this little basket that you can sit in and you can run right over, roll right over it, the other side. We have a, a one seater on the Rodney M. Davis, but there's one and two seaters. One of our ship wide qualifications is to make sure that this basket thing works. And I always volunteered to do this for training purposes. Like, let me go in it. This is like the perfect shot. I'm talking about Venturi stuff. This is it right here. And uh, it was deliberated. They opted to give the ride of a lifetime to a medical training dummy. Am I still bitter about it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. I told you I would assume the risk of death. It didn't matter. I know all the people involved with that, you know, who didn't let that happen. And I've written their names down, and they know who they are. And I, will, I, I need an apology. I'm really glad that we did this. I needed to get that off my chest. If you do an emergency breakaway here, if you have a, a man overboard and an emergency breakaway, what would you, how would you maneuver out of the Venturi effect? So we're basically going to cut everything off and then ease out of the Venturi effect, ease out of the vacuum in between both ships, which takes a lot of cajoling. You don't just stop and hang a left or hang a right. You have to stay at the, maintain the same speed and slowly break away at the same pace as the other ship. You know, if you turn right in a ship, that means the back of your ship would go into the Venturi and you can get sucked sideways. Okay, so you have to both back away until the speed of that water, the speed of that water slows down and becomes regular again. And then you can make your emergency man overboard and try to find the person that got sucked under the ship. <sighs> That's going to be a tough situation. Which happens, you know. It happens a lot. That's why this evolution is so dangerous. Here's the helicopter coming in for a vert rep, vertical replenishment. When you start seeing things cross over into the ocean, you're like, don't fall in. You know, here's our fresh supply of food. Don't fall into the drink. Goes through, gets sucked up into our intakes, past the rotor. You know, all of our ice cream gets dumped in, making a milkshake in the sea. Pumps or something? I don't know. Anyway, we're sending something out right now. We'll send back all the pallets because we have no use for them, you know. That's usually the stuff that we send at the end. One of the men in these videos got into the ship's supply of morphine. He uh, did some harm to us, and, uh, you know, his sailors. Saw him on the bridge one time. He was lit up like the night sky. I didn't know what was going on, though. Because a lot of sailors, they knew the look, you know, you have. I didn't really know it. Oh, he's got the look. He's mentally... Mentally sucked into the Venturi vortex. The sea.
So the Quartermasters have an international flag bag. And this international flag bag has all the necessary colors, shapes, and uh, numbers that we need to transfer messages from ship to ship using our halyards. See these ropes here? These are halyards. These black shapes that you have, these are the day shapes. And you can see the day shape rack here. But yeah, that's the tri uh, diamond day shape anyway. But th that gets hold hauled down and then we haul ass to get out of there. This would be an example of an emergency breakaway if we practice it. At the end of every one, we do an emergency breakaway. And they play music and, you know, we pretend like, you know, it's training. Everything is training. So you do the emergency breakaway, play the crazy music, and then roll off back out to see what do you got for the next month? Nothing. Water on all sides. This whole process is really fun at night, man. This is sailing. This is Navy 101 right here, man. The danger of it, everything. You know, you, as a sailor, you really don't get to relax because everybody on the ship's involved with it. You're, you know, wherever you are on the ship, this is like an all-hands thing. So, you don't ever get to really just enjoy it. You're always in some you know some other place in your head like what well, you know your safety you know whatever whatever you're doing you know corpsmen you know all the people in the galley they're all getting new food they need to put the food in the right places you know some stuff doesn't get frozen it gets chilled and you know all this other stuff you know so everybody's working and you never get to really just chill out and just look at it like wow this is badass You wouldn't usually do a night unrep unless you had somewhere to be at a specific time. And you can't be slowed down in that path. So you'd usually do a broad daylight, you know. Safety concerns at night are pretty obvious, right? I mean, if you go overboard at nighttime, there is virtually no chance of you surviving. Because if we break away, I mean, finding you at night in your dark clothes is going to be really tough. You know, man overboard period on Navy ships is not a highly successful event. I hate to say it. It's time for bed. I got watch in four hours. <laughs> That's how it is. It's time for bed. I got I got watch in four hours. You're still you still got that crap all over your hands from the from the line. I'm gonna be out there in the cold for the next four hours, next six hours. You gotta get into some crazy like suit, this big orange suit, and sit out there because it's so cold and you're so wet. You know, it might be raining or whatever. You're still sitting out there whole ship's got watches you watching the watching the ocean checking it out all the time always on patrol always on guard always ready the Rodney M Davis has a signature dish and it is our last package that we send over this package is a peach cobbler a Georgia peach you know to celebrate making Georgia, the Rodney M. Davis, Rodney Maxwell Davis, who died for his team. You know, he was a black man. Rodney M. Davis was the second warship ever named after a black man. So, we're very proud of it. Our peach cobbler was second to none. It had those little crispy crumblies. I don't know how, how, how to really explain what the crispy, you know, that crispy crumble that goes on top of a peach cobbler. And I was thinking, how do I describe it? A peach 
crumble is like, you know, when you go to Long John Silver's and you get that fish plank, and you got those crumbles there underneath the fish plank, those fried crispies, salty. You put those, you put those in a bag and call it a snack. It's that version, but for sweet food. And that goes on the peach cobbler. Unbelievable, man. And then we send it over in a beautiful parchment package. This is from the Rodney M. Davis celebrating Macon, Georgia. God bless, farewell, following seas. Rodney M. Davis is out. <laughs>